वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नीरू टंडन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश वी एस एस टी कॉलेज कानपुर वी आर डिस्कसिंग पेपर ऑन लिंग्विस्टिक्स दिस मॉड्यूल नंबर थर्टी फोर ऑन द टॉपिक स्टाइलिस्टिक्स हैज बीन रिटन बाय मिस साफिया बेगम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद This module will introduce you to stylistics a branch of applied linguistics in this module you will first learn the varied meanings and de definitions of a style later you will find the meaning and definitions of a stylistics further you will come to know about the emergence of a stylistics as a separate literary theory you will also find brief explanation of various theoretical concepts that paved the way for the origin of stylistics later you will be introduced to some of the major concepts of stylistics like foregrounding and deviation etc along with some examples after reading this module you will be able to say meaning of a style in creative expression especially writing perhaps you may also have your definition of a style more importantly you will be able to say what does stylistics mean and what it does further you will be able to identify the stylistic devices like foregrounding and deviations in any literary writing now first let us understand what is style what do we mean by the term style you know the term style and stylistics sounds similar yes they have a very close connection so to understand the meaning of stylistics we will first delve into the meaning of the word style merriam webster dictionary defines style as i quote a distinctive manner of expression as in writing or speech or a distinctive manner or custom of behaving or conducting oneself or a peculiar mode of living or a particular manner or technique by which something is done created or performed unquote this definition shows very clearly that whenever we talk about a style a style is not a particular matter that you can relate with it is its area is very wide its gamut is very wide it may be something that is written or spoken or it may be some custom some behavioral procedures or the way you conduct yourself without saying anything or a particular mode of living also comes under the uh, word style so it may be a technique or it may be a manner by which you do something you create something or you perform something that is your style now when we come to stylistics so style means as i told you a particular way of doing things be it anything it helps us to understand the wide application of the term and its different meaning in different context however for us the first definition may be a distinctive manner of expression of a style is important in writing a style means a way of expression but there are different understanding of it as well according to goeth i quote generally speaking an author's style is a faithful copy of his mind if you would write a lucid style let there first be light in your mind and if you would write a grand style you ought to have a grand character unquote for buffon i quote a style is a man's own it is part of his nature the style is the man himself unquote jonathan swift opines that proper words in proper places make the true definition of style unquote in the same way flaubert says i quote one arrives at style only with atrocious effort with fanatical and devoted stubbornness unquote edward gibbon holds that the style of an author should be the image of his mind but the choice and command of language is the fruit of exercise unquote through all these definitions we can have 
an idea about the matter that is known as a style especially related with a writer's style whenever there is a author a author an author is known by his style by his prose style poetic style dramatic style whatever he writes so his style is something that bears his name so through all these definitions we have reached to a conclusion that style has got different defin definitions style has got different definitions and different connotations now one can observe that for some writers like goethe style is an image of writer's mind and his character for buffon style is man himself whereas for swift it is the arrangement of words flaubert defines his style in terms of a skill that can be achieved if someone consciously put an effort to learn it nevertheless style is a significant feature of writing that helps in presenting one's own feelings thoughts emotions and so on as there are different definitions of style there are various styles of writing so all writers have their own styles of writing the important point for a reader is to understand the message or meaning the writer is trying to convey through his or her peculiar style now how do we arrive at meaning based on style that's a question in front of us in this situation it is stylistic that helps one to analyze a literary piece and derive meaning out of it now what is the meaning of stylistics according to david crystal stylistics is a branch of linguistics which studies the feature of situationally distinctive uses of language and tries to establish principles capable of accounting for the particular choices made by individual and social groups in their use of language i quote peter barry said i quote stylistics is a critical approach which uses the methods and findings of the science of linguistics in the analysis of literary texts by linguistics here is meant the scientific study of language and structures rather than the learning of individual languages unquote as stylistics is one of the branches of linguistics like psycholinguistic sociolinguistic it applies the insights of linguistics to arrive at an interpretation of a literary text hence in specific terms stylistic means a scientific way of examining interpreting the language of a literary text unlike literary criticism where focus remains not only on the language but on various aspects like history and culture of a literary text biography of an author so on and so forth to arrive at the interpretation of a literary text however stylistics does this by the simple means of linguistic techniques it means stylistics claims to be an objective method of interpretation as it does not consider history cultural background of a literary text or biography of an author at this stage it is necessary to know more about the stylistics and its association with other theories and concepts now stylistics traces its origin in the subject of antiquity that is rhetoric r h e t o r i c that is very important to remember that rhetoric was one of the three subjects of ancient greeks the other two subjects were logic and grammar initially rhetoric was an art of persuasion through speech but later on it also came to mean all forms of eloquence along with writing hence there is a close connection between rhetoric and stylistics stylistics as a proper literary theory as we know it today emerged in 20th century It is the linguistics theory that majorly developed in 20th century laid the foundation of stylistics. As I have already told you it is part of the applied linguistics. So Sears major concepts diachronic and synchronic language lang and parole signifier and signified 
meanings are relational and relationship between symptomatic and paradigmatic these are various important concept as far as stylistics is concerned we should not forget the russian formalism also that defamiliarization concept and distinction between story and plot and communication theory then structuralism as an intellectual movement should be consulted as well all these eminent scholars works and movement paved the way for the emergence of stylistics it was in late 1950s a number of scholarly works began to apply linguistics for the interpretation of literary works in other words stylistics it began with a famous conference on style held at indiana university in 1958 the proceedings of this particular conference were published as the book known as style in language and it was edited by thomas a sibiok and linguistics and literary style edited by donald c freeman then came essays on style and languages and the language of literature by roger fowler now the normal question comes in our mind what does this stylistics do now let me answer this that is stylistic analysis is an objective and scientific commentary upon a literary text which is based on concrete quantifiable data and applied in a systematic way further it emphasizes on the connections between literary and everyday languages it uses concepts of linguistics such as transitivity under lexicalization collocation and cohesion so on and so forth all of them are the four grounding devices now what is four grounding oxford online dictionary defines four ground as the part of a view that is nearest to the observer especially in a picture or photograph and as a verb it means to make the most prominent or important feature unquote hence foreground means to bring something into one's attention by placing it in front and make it more prominent it is generally used as a technique to highlight or underline the meaning of something in an artistic work as in photography paintings literature etc it is done to attract the attention of the readers moreover foregrounding is used to shift the attention of the reader from what is said to how it is said in systematic functional linguistics foregrounding refers to a prominent portion of a text that contributes to the total meaning jan mukarovsky pioneered the concept of foregrounding in russian and it is rendered into english as foregrounding foregrounding as mentioned above refers to various effects of a style that a writer uses to highlight or shock or to drag the attention of readers towards it it could be at phonetic level like through alliteration rhyme etc or at the grammatical level by using inversion ellipsis etc or even at the semantic level by employing metaphor irony etc etc further he notes that foregrounding exist everywhere like in oral discourse journalistic writing so on and so forth however he says in literature it is more organized and structured and in a hierarchical manner as in one aspect of writing or device dominates the other there are different types of foregrounding techniques used in literature the following are some of the foregrounding devices number 1 is deviation in linguistic terms deviation means to move away from the language rules another name of deviation in the traditional sense of meaning is the poetic license poets and writers they seem to have this license to deviate from normal usage of language on the other hand a common native language user adheres or obeys the conventional language rules however deviation is an important foregrounding device through which writers create or have a desired effect on their readers 
The following are some of the language deviation techniques widely employed by the writers. Graphological deviation. It means the moving away from the conventional form of arranging letters into words and words into lines, for example, in poetry, in verse and into sentences, maybe in prose or verse. For example, see the poem E. E. Cummings. This is a poem that is uh, on your screen. The moment we look at it, the first question would be, is this a poem or what kind of a poem is it? If we look at it carefully for one or two minutes, we will be able to see the only complete word in it is one. If we look at it once again, then appears the word leaf in it. Then we will see the leaf now falls. Further, we will see there is a bracket. If we remove that bracket and the words written in it, then we will see the word loneliness. The poem through the symbol of falling leaf presents the idea of loneliness. So in this way, it gives you a different style, not common. It gives you something speculative. It gives you some idea that how you can just understand the idea of the poet conveyed through this particular poem. Then we have orthographic deviation. There is another interesting deviation device called orthographic deviation and which means departure from the conventional form of spelling. For example, K-A-R car instead of C-A-R car or F-O-T-O photo instead of P-H-O-T-O photo as we sometimes find it in the shops, signing boards, especially in remote areas. We just don't take it into consideration considering that these people are not educated and they don't know how to spell it and the way they are speaking they write it. But it is not a conscious decision to attract the people's attention. However, they do attract our attention and make us laugh. Similarly, we find such deviation in creative writing as well. Mostly in poems we find such things. Now you see this, good luck will miss you. Now you see good luck, this K is missing. Instead we have L-U-C luck, good luck. Will means not pahia, but it is we will miss. You is not Y-O-U, it is Y-E-W. Even then we can read it. And it attracts our attention as well. It is the style of the writer. So good luck, we'll miss you. This we will becomes we'll. Of course, a writer deviates not just to attract the attention of his or her readers, but his or her linguistic deviation is a conscious effort that points at something meaningful. It also helps in comprehending overall meaning of literary piece. For example, William Blake's poem, you must have not forgotten it, The Tiger. In it, Blake uses the spelling of T-I-G-E-R, Tiger, as the Tiger, T-Y-G-E-R. Tiger was indeed an older spelling, but even by Blake's time, the modern spelling Tiger had been standardized. And so the poet was making a deliberate departure from the modern spelling and he was using the older version that is T-Y-G-E-R. You see the poem in front of you, the tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. So the older spelling suggests an animal that is different more mysterious the letter y in the middle also may represent a longer vowel or diphthong in one of the stories of a a milne the boy calls his pet tiger 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 t i g g e r pronounced to rhyme with snigger which takes away all terror from the animal Blake's deviant spelling acquires significance in the context of the entire poem where the animal is represented as an object of awe, terror, wonder and mystery. Thus, in artistic works, every linguistic deviation that is made holds some significance. Another word to be discussed is under lexicalization. It is a term invented by Fowler. It refers to cases where there is a lack of an adequate set of words to express specific concepts. For example, for a particular word like 
handle we do not say handle rather use the word the holding thing cohesion cohesion means sticking together here sentences that are joined into a single continuous utterances are known as cohesion syntactically or grammatically they are individual sentences however if they are put together side by side they make sense otherwise not in the absence of cohesion they read awkward for example this is anita anita is my friend anita and i go to school together the awkward sentences or repetition of proper noun is eliminated by using pronoun in linguistic terminology it is called pronominalization if the proper noun is removed from the sentences then they will be like this this is anita she is my friend we go to school together this sounds so normal so natural so we can see that now these sentences are in cohesion they make more sense and have a flow thus we had seen that stylistics is a literary theory that uses linguistic theories and devices to analyze a literary writing either prose or poetry apart from this there are various other devices that stylistics uses like deviation in punctuation morphological deviation syntactic deviation metaphor as deviant colloquialism semantic deviation repetition phonological repetition lexical repetition syntactic repetition and parallelism in this module you have seen that what is stylistics you have understood with the help of this style that the style and stylistics are concerned and they are interconnected so whenever we talk about a style and the way that a style is presented is known as a stylistic in a simple way you can understand it and whenever we just consider and just explain that stylistic portion we come to know about various deviations how the style is make different how uh, a writer maybe a poet or a, a novelist how he just improves upon his writing how he just presents his own uh, writing style in his own way by deviation or by changing the spelling or uh, through various other techniques discussed in this module so it is interesting to know why a writer writes like that with the help of these stylistics we can explain that in detail thank you for visiting epg patshala